Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Basilica. Amen. It's been a long time in coming, and, it, and we've still got a long way to go before we return back to normal. But in, in the, uh, the meanwhile, we are grateful for Bishop Sticka for opening the church to public masses starting on May 31st, Pentecost Sunday. But in order to do that, we have to be cautious and prudent in the way we do it so that we protect ourselves, our uh, families, and especially the most vulnerable among us. We weren't going to say anything, Tony. <laughs> and we, we want to be responsible for keeping the spread of this, uh, this disease down to so-called flatten the curve. And it's going to be uh, all hands on deck to make sure that that happens. Um, this, is, this is not something we should take lightly. And we are exercising uh, the primacy of the spiritual when we set foot in here and take the risk to come into a public place to do th this, uh, what, what is our God-given right to worship him. And we are grateful for that that we live in a country where uh, these rights are not just automatically taken away without people say saying anything about it. Um, and so we exercise it, but we, we want to do it with the common good in mind and with due measures of prudence. Now, Bishop Sticka has issued a directive on how that will take place. And we have endeavored through consultation with the clergy and the parish pastoral council to translate that into our particular location here. The result of it will be coming out tomorrow. We're gonna, and you, you received it in your email already, but we're gonna be broadcasting it to everybody tomorrow, but you already received that. Hopefully you've had a chance to read through it. Tonight is an opportunity for us to walk through with you, our volunteers, to help us facilitate the people of God coming back into uh, the church. Thank you for putting yourself in this place to help us to, to, to bring the people of God here to worship and to experience God's goodness and his mercy and his compassion. So there are just a few things. Even if we don't fully understand how uh, this virus is working and even if we may not be able to do all things necessary uh, to be in a sterile environment, knowing that we are not going to be able to prevent the spread completely of this disease. We want to do good things to minimize the spread. And one thing that has been recommended is the wearing of a face mask. It's not comfortable, neither was the cross. It's not convenient. Neither, neither were the wounds that Jesus bore for our, our salvation, right? We do it not because we think somehow that we are preventing all uh, disease escaping from our, our lungs or getting in, but we do it to, to minimize it. And we know that there's something psychological going on too, that when I wear this mask, other people see it and they acknowledge that at least I'm thinking of them not, not, not you know, uh, being, being aware of their presence. Okay, the bishop has asked us to wear face masks. We do have some disposable ones that uh, uh, are gonna be available. We're trying to work out how that's gonna be. Tony has a good example of a face mask that is not anything more than just that, that um, like a dust guard. That's sufficient. Um, it doesn't have to be anything more than, than just a covering over your, over your mouth. It doesn't have, it can be a scarf, it can be a bandana, any number of things. The, the other thing is, we are going to be cleaning extensively just to make sure all of our surfaces remain cleaned as best as we can. Uh, so we have these cleaning products that we have invested in and gotten it. And then we're also, just like you go to the grocery store or any other store, they have the little 
indicators in the floor, which way you're supposed to go and where you, where you can stand and where you, you shouldn't stand. We're gonna have this kind of procedure also to be um, proactive and responsive to what our authorities are telling us are the best way to prevent the spread of this disease. So tonight is all gonna be about learning the procedure that we have developed here. It's not gonna be fun, it's not gonna be convenient. None of us wants to be doing all of this, but we do it because we believe being here is, is important. Uh, we could all just stay home, and that is a legitimate option. But many of us know and feel the need to be in the presence of God and to worship. And so we have to do that responsibly and prudently. So that's why we have all of these. Now, um, there's lots of things that we're going to be talking about tonight, and that's why we're recording it. You can go back in and uh, listen. Uh, and hopefully we can get even more volunteers to help us to do this, because it's going to be a monumental task. And we pray that this will be very temporary. Right? We can make it an earnest prayer of ours that God would shorten this thing and that uh, we would be able to find uh, that which will keep us safe uh, soon so that we can forego these, these uh, extra measures. With that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Deacon Hicks, Armour, and Maria Rist, who have been helping me uh, to uh, put together the procedure. We're going to explain it to you, walk it through with you, so that you can see it and study it and ask your questions. Thank you. First thing I want to do is, is thank you for being here. Um, for the last few months, we've been up here by ourselves, and um, I can't tell you how hard it is to stand here and read God's word to you and know that there's no one out there. When I do this to tell you when to say the song, I really want you to know we're thinking about you. So th this has been, uh, in many ways, hard on us being here by ourselves, knowing you're someplace else. So and I want to thank you for what you're coming here to do. What we've tried to do, and there's been a, a whole lot of work put in this, uh, Father David and Maria and John Mahoney, and you'll see the, the, um, the ropes. Um, we, we have two or three basic things that, that come into play on everything. He mentioned uh, social distancing, which we're doing. He mentioned hand sanitizing, cleaning, which we're doing. And so part of this, the first part I want to do is with the ushers is, and uh, Maria's giving you a diagram of how we're going to social distance. And we'll do the seating first, then we'll go into where you're going to be and what the tasks are, okay? Basically, every other row is taken off and we have counted the people and we are, we are limited to uh, six foot social distancing and a capacity of the church. I'm having a hard time with this thing, I hate it. But, um, <laughs> Uh, so what this does is shows you that every other pew was taken and then we've gone through and basically measured to figure out how many people that we can see, okay? Now, in that arrangement, what happens is, and I may as well see them, we have to have one seat at the end of each pew. So this one, this one, where Henry is sitting, the same on this side, so that when people come in or go to communion, they're six feet this way, okay? So let me give you the numbers, then we're going back into how it works. If you basically go to the third page, it tells you that. In the two middle sections here, you have this space, this space, and you see one is six feet two, one is seven foot eight. We lose one at the end of each pew, so ideally we can sit six people. Now, every family isn't six. Cameron and Tia walk in, and Usher's got to think, do I put them right here, or do I put them over there? 
So you're going to have to think a little bit because the number at the bottom is 384. That's less than 50%, but it's an ideal number, and that includes the choir loft and Varallo Hall. Up here, the number is actually 208, and there's 800 seats. So that's how we have to do it. So part of this is going to be how you set people in, okay? So if, if a family of three walk in, on the side over there, it has a seating for four. This has six. You can put two here and four here, but you can't put five and five. So we're, we're, we're trying to figure out puzzle fittings. So how well we place is going to determine how many people we can get in because we don't want to have a problem putting people in the choir. We hate to send them downstairs and we sure don't want to send them home. And that's what we're trying not to do, okay? So people will come in and they'll be directed through the middle doors, down the three aisles, and there'll be an usher in each of the aisles that will basically come in and seat the people. So we're going to be trying to place them. And as they, if, if they sit down someplace, it's okay for me to work around them. So we're going to have to have a little bit of, of being assertive so that we can seat the people where we have the spaces. So once they come in, there'll be an usher here, usher in the middle, an usher on that side, who will seat the people based on every other row, trying to maximize the numbers of seats. So rather than just finding an empty seat, we're going to try to maximize the number, okay? Once the downstairs is full, and there'll be a counter at the back, and I'll come to that, then we have 16 seats. If you turn around and you look at the organ in the middle to the left, there's, and there's a diagram on here, there's, you have to do every other pew, there's a short pew, and then one behind it, and we can use this half. So with social distancing, we're really going to get about 16 people up there. Okay? And then we go downstairs, and if you look at the, the diagram downstairs, there's, if you remember when we had mass down there, there was four sets of poles. We were able to put four rows in there. We can't do that. We can only put two to social distance. So between the poles, you will see there's two rows of chairs. One, one row from the middle has six, against the wall has four. That gives us aisles, and that takes into account that we have to take care of the foot on the end of each one, okay? So there again, that's ideal seating, and how well we place depends, will help us get more people in, okay? Any general questions on that part of it? For example, if the, what the, the Hispanic, they are seven, eight, and they put in the same bank? Yes. It, yes, and the, the basic numbers are I measured myself. Some are smaller, and some are bigger. It gives you about two feet. But if you have younger children, then but you're going to have to basically leave the one space here. If a family of eight walks in, I would definitely put them in the middle row and scrunch them together. Okay? So this is ideal. It's not going to work out this way. But I think if we use judgment and common sense, then we can make it work. If, if a family of five comes in, but I put them over here. If they weren't this big, yes, I'd stick them over here. So, so Cameron, five Camerons, no offense, won't fit on this side over here. <laughs> or can you do something? Just, just use common sense. And that's why you all are here. You're going to be the ones helping us to bring people to the proper place and to help them comply as best as we can. 
you know, there's not going to be 100% ac accuracy in all of this. We're, 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 we're doing what we, what, the best we can to comply. Um, let me just go through a few things before people come and, and just for your awareness so you can get, us, get to spread the word. We remember that the Sunday Mass obligation is suspended for this time. No one is obliged to come, so that should be made known. And anyone who has symptoms of coronavirus or any other illness that, 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 would, that would expose people, we would invite them to, to stay at home at this time. So those who have symptoms. Now, we talked about the mask. The bishop has said that anybody five years of age and older, or actually over, over the year of five, so six and up, will have to bring and wear a mask or face covering and keep six, six feet apart from other fam family groups. Now, I know that might be a hardship, but we, we have an obligation to tell you that's what the bishop has asked. Um, and also, there's a lot of parts of the Mass that will be suspended, like the sign of peace, the, the bringing forward of the gifts, uh, and, and those kind of things. We, we're, we're doing the, the, the best we can to, to not touch each other. We are telling people, don't gather in spaces like the vestibule or in Verado Hall or in the bathrooms or whatever, don't gather. Uh, and to, oh, that was another thing to note that weekday masses will be public also. And if you can't come on a Sunday, come on a weekday when there's far fewer people trying to come into church. So that's another thing that's, that's being offered to you. Okay. Um, the next thing for us is to talk about entrance. Yeah. into the church. What, what I'd like to do is let me tell you one thing before we do that. Let me tell you where we're going to place people oh, right. as ushers. And then, then, we'll, then we're going to go through this. And the first part kind of outlines it. Basically, this is the it says usher procedure. Everybody get that? Okay, we'll get you one. He didn't get one. Okay, basically, what we're going to have is they ask for one door, single file entry. They really want somebody in the parking lot saying, keep your family together, put your mask on, go single file into the church. Okay, so there will be two doors you can come in. The downstairs doors where you come in to go down to Brallo Hall, or come up the stairs because there's an elevator there for handicap. Okay? They can come in that door and they'll be directed upstairs down the hall to come into the middle door. Okay? The door from the outside of the church will be that door over there, the one that you don't have any stairs into in case somebody has a, a, a walking disorder. Okay? So that door. So either way you come in and there'll be an usher at the back inside of the double doors. They'll be doing two things. They're gonna put you into the three aisles. So the first family would come over to here, the second one here, and the third, that way we'll practice distancing, okay? And then the second person is gonna be counting so we don't match, get past our big number. The only, Mass that we have a problem with the full number is on the it's on the Spanish masses. We don't have that many people at the 5:30 to 9 or what was 11:30. Okay, so I think we're going to be good on those numbers. We just need to spread out. Okay, so you've got a person downstairs, a person at that door, a person there, and three in the aisles, and then if we need a person. In the, in the choir loft, and we'll use the stairs on that side, and then we walk through the seating chart, okay? So the first part of this will be is talking about assigning the duties before we start. So whoever Cameron is, like the lead person at the 5.30 mass, would then need to make sure we have the doors covered and the people assigned and they know what to do. Okay, and so you'll see the two ushers on the exterior doors will greet, make sure they have a mask, talk about single file, talk about somebody will seat you, which is different. That way they're not expecting to pick out the seat 
where Amy's sitting, where she always sits, okay? So then um, they will direct people into the church, they'll do the, the counting, and they'll make sure the people are in the pews, in the choir, or go downstairs, okay? But people are supposed to have a mask, okay? And there'll be some there, and they'll need to hold on to it, okay? So that basically gets the people in to where they're gonna do your jobs. Now, before mass, there's a list of things that you'll see on the first page. It talks about what we need to do to keep or to minimize touching. They're gonna prop doors open. They're going to uh, uh, direct you to where you're not having to touch all the doors. So the doors are gonna be propped open. And so this list of things here, if you can read, I don't think you need to read every one of it, but this is what we'll need to do, okay? Now, once people are in, there's really, um, you will do your uh, collections with the baskets. So you will still use the, the long basket like it was on the stick we're using now, but you'll wanna maintain your distance from the middle. And you do that this way as you do all the time you anyway. That's not a problem. We're not doing the uh, presentation of the gifts. So basically, the other thing we're gonna do, is communion at the end, right? Right. Okay. We're going to, to facilitate communion. Communion will be at the end of Mass. So essentially, Mass will end, and then we'll have communion. Okay. The reason why we chose to do that the layout of the church is such, and the number of times, if we, if we want to minimize circulation of people coming into contact with each other, we're gonna cut out the communion procession as a separate procession, and it will basically be the recessional procession, so that you come in, you're here for mass, and as you're going out, you will be receiving communion. Now that's, that requires a special amount of um, understanding on our part that of, of due reverence to the Blessed Sacrament and we're going to encourage people to go right to their cars and in their cars make their uh, moment of thanksgiving instead of staying in the church so you will be processing in and what it's going to facilitate is one less circulation of people so it's going to make your jobs easier you have one less thing to, to do and also it would be near impossible with the way the church is set up uh, to do that multiple times uh, without people coming into contact. So the idea is that we're going to offer, that we're going we're gonna to say mass, but then the priest will receive, the deacon, the servers will receive, but then that's, that's the only people that will receive within mass. We will then give the final blessing. And at th that point, we'll start instructing people and, and bringing them up to be along the, the altar rail. And, and if you don't, if you're not gonna be receiving, you would just exit the church also in that same procession. Does that make sense? So what you will do then as the usher, then we're gonna receive communion like we've done before a, a row at a time, but you're gonna direct them. So basically what you're gonna do is if you come to this row, then if the two people who are sitting here are gonna say, I'm not gonna receive, then they will go out. And so this usher will control this side. There'll be somebody on this side or we may have the same one. And you can either exit or you can go up. So again, we'll need one person each aisle. And ideally, it would be good to have someone up here. If you look at the, at the, at the uh, altar rail, we've marked them at about six foot eight of us. That means you get about six people on this side of the time and six people on that side of the time. Now, let me tell you what we've been trying to do and we haven't really perfected it yet. The flow is like this. So what we do, which may be confusing, is that the priest or deacon goes to the end so that the people will come down and will start with the row full. And then, after doing this way, then we go this way. That way, 
this person can leave and the person comes back. If you do the opposite way, you're, you're colliding. So we're going to try to remember that we do it this way so that person can leave and then the next person comes in and fills in this way and will minimize the traffic this way. So um, we need to do our part, but if you'll help them here get to it, it'll be helpful. Okay? Okay. So, Question. yes, ma'am. If we're bringing the people out this way and the ones that are going to receive are going that way and the ones that are not are no 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 the, with the plan is for us all to go that we're going to get to the center aisles first they'll come through and okay. they'll go through all the way to the back and then the side aisles will be coming coming through doing the okay uh, coming, I, mis coming I misunderstood out, I, I, I thought well, the we, ones we, going the, 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 I think we're going to go out that way, out that way. yes yes but, but the side Oh, that's right. Okay. 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 So, just to clarify, everyone is going to go this way. Okay. okay? We, we talked about the people who weren't going to receive going this way because they can. Well, okay. no, what we were talking about is them just bypassing communion. Okay. And going okay. Else. Okay. Yes. So, let's explain it. So, the, the row would stand up and they would come forward. And so, if Tony's not going to receive... So everybody's standing up at this time, including Cameron and so the ushers. And you would come out this way. Come up here. There's a screw out there. Yeah, we'll fix that. And if you're not going to receive, then you would just continue going around. So go ahead. You would exit that way. And then you would take... Well, we're going to direct you down there the first time. So we fill it up. So just pick the farthest one down. I'm not. Okay. And then and we'll be coming with communion. And then he's going to do the end first and come this way. Then you'll fill in and, you and then you go out. And Tony, if you didn't receive, you would wait over there. You can right. go on out. Okay. But I never come to ask not receive. And then where sister was sitting and that aisle over there, they follow the, the row and come through and come through here. Oh yeah, and this is where we need an usher to stand and, and to make sure everybody who takes a pump of the of the um, hand, sanitizer. hand sanitizer. Right. So everybody see that? So this is the flow. When someone comes up, when they get to here, they will pull their mask down. Yes. They will use the hand sanitizer, and then they will go to their location. Okay. So you'll have the mask down from here to your social distance. And then after you receive, you'll pull your mask back up and exit the church. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. We, we, need, we need to be conscious of social distancing. So where they're sitting this way, he should not come up behind her. We should keep the distance. And I think the way it's set up, it should flow. And, and from a time, we'll be all right. But we need to maintain social distancing. So can we tell the congregation to please remain seated until the usher comes to your row? Yes. We're going to give directions at the end of Mass. And actually, the clergy who are distributing are going to take off their outer vestments. That way, if they come in contact, all it is is a cotton out and it can be clean. Okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is have Cameron have a person who's in charge of each group. Okay? So the 5.30 ushers, let's just say it's Cameron, he would be the one who assigned the jobs and kind of gave the directions, okay? The first weekend, I'm gonna to try to do all the masses, but I don't wanna take a specific assignment like that because if I get stuck right there and we need something down here, I can't move around. So I'm gonna to try to be here on the first Sunday at all the masses if I survive that long. <laughs> I know that we have lost three for the time being, ushers for the 5.30 on Saturday. Correct. David and me. I, I talked to David. 
Correct. There's three and, of them and that two, think they're, they're senior citizens. They're in their 80s, oh, all three of them. One of them's got a wife that is in very frail health, and he's scared to death that he's going to bring something home for her. Or to don't her. come. No, he's not. But okay. anyway, those three are not going to be okay. for the foreseeable future. This is, this is why the good people behind you are here, okay? Is they, 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 they're volunteer. And Maria, wherever she is, has a list of who said they would be here. And so at the end, we want to check that off and make sure, A, if you didn't tell you were coming, get on the list. B, that we get your cell number and your email so we can communicate with you. It's going to be important um, that I think we're going to have to adjust after the first week. But if we can just try it once, I, I, I'm a believer that if we try to do the right thing, God helps us. Okay? I think in the spirit of loving God, we're coming to see Him. I think if we try, He'll help us. It was kind of like this morning, I'll tell him, Father Valentin, um, we were doing the, the seven o'clock mass and he had not expected to do it. Well, he ended up doing it. He walks in and says, can you preach? And I said, well, I read the first reading, the responsorial song, because I'm going to do that. And he said, I didn't know I was going to do it. So we put something together and he agreed to preach. It was one of his better homilies. So I think when we try, God helps us. And so if we do this and we try, I think that first, second, third week, we'll work out the kinks, people will understand it, and they'll take the time in their car to have not just a spiritual communion, but a special time with God. And I think that's what we're trying to do. So we just have to do the best we can and try to do it correctly, and I think the people will go along. None of us like doing this. I'm fighting it right now. But if we just try, okay? All right, so that, so we are going to need everybody to come and take a look at the list and sign up what mass that they're, they're wanting to do. And we'll talk about the mass times and the formats and things like that in just, just a little bit, too. Yeah. Okay. So once everybody has uh, uh, left the church for that particular mass and they've gone to their cars to make their Thanksgiving after communion and are leaving, then we have the cleaning crew who will then proceed to, to wipe down all of the surfaces and to prepare it for the next mass. And so if you're an usher that has a, 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 at a mass, that there was a mass before it, I'm thinking in particular what was gonna be the 1130 extraordinary form mass, the 130 uh, mass in Spanish, there's a mass before. As an usher, if you get here early, we're gonna to have to be keeping people out perhaps while we clean the church unless they're coming to help clean the church. That's, maybe we'll enlist them to help us, uh, conscript them into cleaning the church. Um, many hands make light work. So in between the masses, we have very specific guidelines that we have to follow to clean the church. And that's what we're gonna explain now. Okay, so um, once we get through mass and communion, then it, the last page talks about what has to be clean. It looks onerous, but if I said my job is to wipe the altar rail down, I would take a wipe, so it's not gonna take me forever okay, over there. I have to wipe it down. So this gives you the list of the things we're supposed to do. So after mass and the mercy chapel will be the cart, the bucket, the gloves, all the supplies you will need. So back there, we would need to kind of divide up and like someone take half the pews, this half, someone take the altar rail. These are the pieces, like the doorknobs. And we've tried to think through every single piece so that you know what to do. So it'd be easier to take a check off list and do that, okay? Um, it talks about the church, the resting room, uh, the sanctuary, the nursery, uh, the parish hall, the 
require, it looks onerous, but when you look at it, it does, it's, it's not that many things to be done. The idea is that we would say one or two people, we need you to go to the nursery. One or two people, we need you to go to Varala Parish Hall and check off those things. And that's the way we're gonna do it. So that's why it's in like a little bit of a check box format that you can, you can go through it like a checklist. The other thing I wanna say is very carefully, if you listen to what they're saying in the last two or three days, they say that less is done on hard surfaces. Most of our surfaces are hard, so you don't have to rub it with what you have, it's gonna disinfect it as, as kind of a swipe. So just just a small matter of right. All I have to do is just give it a good once over. And so the pews can be done almost, and you're only going there's 14 in this section and 10 in that section. So you're not doing 50 pews. Even a priest can do that. Done. <laughs> The lady who cleans the house would say, I've never seen you do that. <laughs> Where's our trash can? We need to buy. Yeah. Okay. Yes. If, if we could get a coordinator for the cleaning to organize, it would be great. Kind of like what Cameron's going to try to do. Um, so I think what we might need to do is um, once we have the, um, their information, we can get more information to them. And if you would volunteer, say for a mass to be a coordinator, that would help us kind of schedule. So if, if Patty says, I can do 1130, and uh, Florence says, I'm gonna be at the Spanish mass, then we can start doing that. So, so that's why we wanna make sure we have your information correct. And if you would agree to be a coordinator, it would be great, okay? And I think the second thing for the coordinator is after the first Sunday, we'll probably say, give us feedback and go, well, we, we need this or that or the other. Make and it better next and that's week. why we need your email addresses so that we can get those changes to you co and, and communicated to you. Because this first weekend when we come back, May 31st, is gonna be a steep learning curve. And when we get back here on June seventh, June sixth, June seventh, where we, there there may be some things that will be adjusted. I'm I'm going to guarantee there are going to be some things that will be adjusted. So in that week in between, we'll be communicating any changes that we make based on the actual experience. Yes, sir. No, only only uh, at, at at the end. Yeah, at the end of mass. Yeah, we're not going to be running it through. The idea is that people aren't touching the rails, really. You know, people people are coming up to the rail and they're kneeling on it. And if people inadvertently touch it, that's a normal thing, just like being in the pew. We will clean that at the end. Most most time, you think about what they're doing. They're going to do exactly what you're doing right there. Put your elbows on it. And it's not their hands. And, and, we'll, and plus, if they do touch it, they will have just put the sanitizer on their hands, so everything will be dead, even when they do touch it. Yeah. Good question, though. Correct. Correct. This Correct. coming uh, or, or on May thirtieth, there is no. Maybe this will be a good time for us to talk about the mass times. Yeah. May 30th, we will not have the 5.30 p.m. Mass. We will, we will be beginning our public Masses with the 9 a.m. on May 31st. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because on May 30th, we have a lot of people who have been waiting to come into the church and to receive their sacraments of initiation that they would have gotten at the Easter Vigil. We have moved that. Bishop Sig has, has given the date of the Vigil of Pentecost to receive people into full communion. So at 12 noon, we have the, uh, the rites of Christian initiation in Spanish. And at 6 p.m., we have the rites of Christian initiation in English. They will both be broadcast Facebook or face, face streamed, live streamed on Facebook um, for, for the parish to, to join in that way. But there is no public mass on, 
uh, the, the Saturday night, the 30th. We will re resume the Saturday evening 5.30 Mass on June 6th. Oh, after also a, a longer labor day, I'm, see, I, I'm sure you've seen it in, in the email that you, you saw. Um, we've taken an opportunity here at the parish. Uh, we've been thinking about this for a long time, but a lot of people have been asking for it. Um, we're looking at a parish who, in the seven years that I've been here, has had lots of demographic change. We've had a huge increase in our Hispanic community, and we've had a continuous and growing request for people, uh, of, uh, from people for uh, a weekly mass in the extraordinary form of the Roman Rite, which is the Latin Mass. So uh, this was something that we've been talking about as a parish council for um, a long while now, what we should do to address the legitimate needs of our parish with the changing demographics. It seemed fitting for us to take the opportunity of the break from the, our, our normal mass schedule and our return to it to revisit how we do things, to be more equitable to the parish uh, uh, demographics. And so, whereas um, uh, half the parish was Spanish speaking, but only one of the five masses was, we decided we needed to add another Spanish mass. And so we have a 7 a.m. It's what the community actually asked for, an early morning Spanish mass. So we, we have a 7 a.m. Spanish mass. There's also, uh, of the, um, let's say, eight, uh, eight to, uh, 800, 700 uh, English-speaking people that come to the, to the mass, about a third of them have indicated and asked for a Spanish, I mean, a, a Latin mass, a, a traditional Latin mass, which is called the extraordinary form. And so we knew that there was not something there. Uh, and with the three masses that we have in English, none of those masses filled the church at, in any, it, to any extent that it was gonna be close to capacity. So we figured we were over serving the number of masses in English uh, and it wasn't an efficient use of our priests anyway. Uh, so why not offer a Latin, mat, a Latin mass to, 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 to accom uh, accommodate those who are legitimately asking for it. So, after a lot of deliberation and planning, we are going to have the 5.30 in English, the 9 a.m. in English, a 7 a.m. in Spanish, the 11.30 will be, in, uh, will be the Latin Mass, and the 1.30 in Spanish. So just a note that we are uh, experimenting with that and proposing that as, as a schedule as we come back. So, so as you think about when and, and Maria is passing out the mass schedule that, that we're proposing, they're going to start with is a trial. Think, look at that schedule and pick that schedule. Pick the one that that um, if, if you've been going to nine and you say I really want the, the traditional Latin mass, then if you say I'm going to pick the 11:30. So look at the schedule before you come back to us with what mass you're going to be there. Um, and I think there'll be a, a natural break in the crowds to do that, okay? But that way we'll also know where we're short. Okay, I think she has given you the, the mass schedule you have, then a write-up about it, and that way you'll know what we're going to do. Okay. That's putting a lot on two priests. It puts, uh, uh, correct, but, it, but it's what we have to do, yeah. We didn't want to put too much on one priest, but it puts a lot, but not too much. Other, okay. Other questions? No, I have a question. When we do collections and then the second collection, will we actually do it twice then? Or are we going to do everything in one fell school? Dan, honestly, we haven't even thought about second collections. Great. <laughs> we will think about it and let you know. We'll communicate by email. That's a good Great question. question. That's why three heads are better than, or four heads are better than three or four. Right. That, that was a pregnant question. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll, we, that's a good question. We'll get back to you. What I'd like for you to do, if you would, I, I didn't want to torture you by reading every single line. Thank you. But, but I would like for you to look at this and think about it because as Maria did it and I looked at it, I had some things and I made some notes. So we're not perfect and just like that question 
please make sure that you see Maria. She's going to be at the, at the back things. And we want to social distance, so don't crowd her all at once. But make sure she has your names, your cell phone number, and your email. And if you know your mask preference, give it to her. If not, we'll do a survey of that. If you know of someone else, if you have a friend who you come to mass with and say, hey, I'm going to volunteer to do this, would you do it with me? And you just start counting the things that's going to take um, a number of people. And I think that if we really think of ourselves as a community, and as the body of Christ, some are able to do things and some aren't. A lot of people are hesitant to go, I'll do that. I would like us to ask people. Most people, if asked, would I do that, they would say yes. And when you're doing it for your church, it's different. If, if I ask Father David, say I've got a horse, which I don't have, I need to clean my stall. If I said, Father, could I pay you $100 to clean my stall? He'd say, <laughs> no. If I said, would you help me clean my stall? He might say yes. I think he actually would have given me a break. Not why I saw the book on the screen. I can't see my face. I'm hiding <laughs> behind a mask. Yeah, but I, yeah, I just, I saw your eyes. But my point is, people, this is our church. It's our community. And it's up to us. It's not up to me to stand back and watch everybody else do all the work. The, the more we are involved, the more we're really involved. And I think this is one time if we want to be able to worship together, we all may have to do something. It's just like we all have to contribute. And with people being gone, we don't have as much. And we're really struggling with the budget. And you've seen him say that. The same is true with, with us volunteering. We need to take ownership of our own church. It doesn't belong to him or me or Father Blatch or anybody else. It's our church. And there were people a hundred years ago who sat in these pews and they took care of it. That's why you have the floor you do. We need we need to take care of it ourselves. Amen. So so we really need to if you have a friend or you know somebody go, come on, why don't you help me do this? And if you ask the first time, the second time is easier. I've gotten over it. Okay? All right. Thank you, everyone. Make sure that you sign up in the back for that mass that you're going to be, uh, be able to give commit to. If you are open to being a leader, uh, be sure to we'll pass that by, and, and Cameron will be happy about that. Let me give you a blessing since you made the trip to come out here. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.